I got two wonderful gifts for Easter this year. One was a magnetic Jesus dress-up kit with a bunch of sexy lingerie outfits that a listener gave me at the American Atheist Convention last weekend. Very cool. We'll post pictures of it on Facebook. It's pretty amazing. But as amazing as it was, the other present was even better because it came in the form of this sad, desperate, flailing opinion piece on CNN's website that argued that maybe, just maybe, Christianity will still be relevant in America 30 years from now. And the fucking contortions that the writer had to make to get there were glorious. So this one comes to us from John Blake, a journalist who desperately wants America to remain Christians for unstated reasons that get creepier and creepier the deeper into his piece you dig. And of course, this is a tough desire to have, given that pretty much every demographic trend is working against him on it. The percentage of the country identifying as Christian has been in free fall for pretty much the entire history of the Internet. For the first time in history, more than half of Americans don't belong to a church. And virtually every credible statistician and demographer who's looked into these trends agree that Christianity's cultural influence is shriveling. But John Blake has it on good authority from several professors and assistant professors from such prestigious centers of higher learning as Center College, the University of St. Thomas, South Virginia University, and North Central College of Illinois, that that might not be the case. And the crux of his argument seems to be that what Christianity loses in native-born atheists, it will more than make up for in Christian immigrants. After all, immigrants to this country overwhelmingly come from South and Central America, which are pretty damn Christian last time he checked. Now, of course, the, the, the plummeting number of Christians started around 1990. In 1990, 90% of Americans identified as Christian. Today, that number is about 63%. So for his argument to be remotely viable, he'd have to show that American immigration was relatively low or even falling over that period and that it's significantly higher and rising today. Immigration has actually been rising since 1990 and seems to have leveled off more or less in the last few years. So like that argument is provably wrong. If immigration was going to save you from this problem, this problem already wouldn't exist. And yet he just spends paragraph after paragraph on this desperate little pipe dream. 2,000 words he spends on an argument you can disprove with a quick Google. So he has to put something in those words, of course, and he damn sure can't use data. So instead, he goes with anecdotes. After all, none other than Thomas Jefferson once predicted that Christianity would die out in America. And then, boom, right after that, second great awakening. Take that, you filthy deist. Except, of course, Jefferson never predicted that Christianity would die out. He just predicted it would be less focused on miracles in Christ's divinity and more focused on the basic idea of salvation and good works, which was correct. And also irrelevant, right? Since it wasn't like Thomas Jefferson was writing some scholarly article based on survey data. He was writing a letter to a buddy along the lines of, yeah, but I don't think we'll always be this stupid. Blake also points out that while a lot of Americans don't affiliate with religion, the majority of those people still do shit like pray and believe in higher powers and meditate, etc. Like, you know, spiritual, religious type shit. And now he presents this as though that bodes well for Christianity's long-term viability, but what he's actually admitting is that even people who already buy into a logically impossible God and the demonstrably non-existent power of prayer still don't buy into their level of bullshit. I'm not sure how this helps his argument. Now, now, you might be inclined to forgive Blake here because you could argue that the point of the piece isn't to predict the future, but rather to soften the Christian stance towards immigration. After all, much of his piece is about how the only real way to maintain a Christian majority is to welcome a higher number of immigrants. And the group said that, you know, most stands in the way of immigration is also the group most worried about Christianity's declining cultural influence. But even if that is his intent, you're just trying to pit one of their prejudices against another one, right? Look, look, y'all, we can keep out the brown people or the atheists, but not both. Hardly a ringing endorsement of acceptance, but it's actually worse than that. I'm giving him too much credit even in that condemnation because he also cautions Christians against not being bigoted enough. Seriously, he has a bit where he's given sort of the like, you know, none of this is guaranteed call to action in his article. And he says, quote, what if the U.S. enters another xenophobic period and limits migration from non-white Christians? What if progressive Christians prove unwilling to align with non-white immigrants who tend to be more conservative on issues of sexuality and gender? End quote. So 
So I guess the key is it's all about hitting the Goldilocks zone of bigotry. You got to have just enough, but not too much. But of course, you don't have to dig into the nuances of the argument to find the bigotry in it because the entire fucking premise is bigoted. Right. The entire article presents the idea of losing the Christian majority as a bad thing, which is no different than bemoaning the declining influence of white people or straight people. It's a clarion call against diversity, which is something that CNN never would have published if the minority he was scaremongering about was something other than non-Christians. In fact, Blake gives away the whole fucking game before the article is over by pointing out that the whole goal here is to maintain Christian control. He points out that even with Christianity's declining number, it still plays an outsized influence in American politics. The examples that he chooses are the election of Donald Trump, the Supreme Court decision to overturn Roe versus Wade, and the passing of anti-LGBTQ hate laws all over the country. Hell, he even cites the fact that Americans are generally too bigoted to vote for atheists as a positive. But make no mistake, American Christianity, despite what John Blake would tell you, is dying. And its bigotry is the thing that's killing it. I would love to say Americans were just too logical to buy into such a patently false belief system, but there's way too much evidence to the contrary for me to cling to that. America is rejecting Christianity because they've seen what it does to a society and they don't want that. And the more time Christians spend convincing themselves that the numbers don't mean what the numbers say, the quicker that demise will come. So thank you, John. Sorry I didn't get you anything.